The invocation is going to be given by Ms. Laney Mulgrew mm. from Un Unity of Wilmington. Good morning, all. Commissioners, members of the city of Wilmington. God, source of us all, we desire to make use of our wisdom, faith, love, and courage as we meet to guide the city of Wilmington. We have the innate power to meet any opportunities and challenges that we encounter. We are here to serve all the people of the city as well as the businesses here as they reach their highest and best levels. We keep the highest good of all of us and all of our overall intentions and consider the consequences intended or otherwise of our actions and decisions. We may not always agree on specific issues at hand or the best way to go forward for the highest good of all, but we remember that we, are, we choose to be here to serve and serve we do with honor, love, and integrity. We acknowledge and appreciate and are grateful for your presence and guidance, and so it is. Amen. Before we move on today, I'd like to slightly deviate from our agenda just for a moment. Today marks the final Board of Commissioners meeting where Wanda Copley will be serving as our county attorney before she retires at the end of the month. Wanda has been a faithful servant for New Hanover County for 39 years. She loves this community and we love her. During her time, Wanda has helped commissioners and county staff navigate significant growth, numerous changes throughout our community, and we have been really fortunate to have her helping us with sound legal guidance for all these years. On behalf of my fellow commissioners, I want to say thank you for all you have done and wish you well in your adventures to come. We truly are going to miss you. It is this now is my pleasure to welcome senior resident Superior Court Judge W. Allen Cobb, Jr. to make a very special presentation to Wanda in celebration and recognition of her devotion and public service. Judge Cobb? Uh, Mr. Chairman, Madam Vice Chair, Commissioners, thank you for allowing me to be with you today. Today I'm honored to stand in the shoes of Roy Cooper, the Governor of the State of North Carolina, to present to one of our finest the Order of the Longleaf Pine. This is the highest award for state or government service granted by his office a nominee should provide notable leadership skills and service within a department, organization, or business for at least 30 years, be of the highest character and work ethic, and be involved in one's community by volunteering in notable causes. The governor has decided to make this award to our new Hanover County, Wanda Copley. Would you please stand and be recognized? And, and now would you and Ron join me down here? So, I'm going to tell these good folks a little bit about you. 
Wanda was the first female county attorney to be appointed in the state of North Carolina. And with 39 years in the position, she is currently the longest serving. She has provided guidance and given advice to the commissioners in order to protect the interest of our local citizens. She has served through numerous projects and initiatives, including the purchase of Airly Gardens, the restriction of smoking in restaurants to protect non-smokers, the establishment within the health department of a COVID pandemic department, and providing doctors who treated AIDS patients before drugs were available. The building of a new jail to remedy existing horrible conditions, which fortuitously allowed the Harrelson Center to develop and flourish. The construction of a new judicial annex to the courthouse, providing counsel to the New Hanover County ABC Board and Airport Authority, <clears throat> excuse me, during unprecedented growth and development, advising the county through many major hurricane, hurricanes and other crises, providing learned counsel during the sale of the hospital, leading the county's opioid litigation, which resulted in more than $18 million to the county. And there was much, much more that I could go through. Her work will have a lasting impact on the county and on our lives, and her many years of service bespeaks the sterling character, integrity, and reputation she has accrued. She is beloved and is one of the most popular and well-liked people in our community. She is truly a delightful person and most deserving of this award and it is my pleasure to present it to you. <clears throat> so when you get a chance to look at it, and read it closely, it'll say, Roy Cooper, governor, reposing special confidence in the integrity, learning, and zeal of Wanda M. Copley, I do by these presents confer the order of the Longleaf Pine with the rank of ambassador extraordinary, privileged to enjoy fully all the rights granted to members of this exalted order, among which is the special privilege to propose the following North Carolina toast in select company everywhere in the free world. <clears throat> and that toast is, here's to the land of the longleaf pine, the summer land where the sun doth shine, where the weak grow strong and the strong grow great. Here's the down home, the old North state, signed, sealed, and dated June 1st. 2023. Congratulations. I'm sure these good people might want to hear anything you have to say. I truly am speechless. This was a total surprise today that, that when I saw brother and my husband and friends, Lisa and Deborah and Zeke come in, I was very surprised. And I knew the whole legal and risk management staff was coming, but I thought it was just to say goodbye. I cannot tell you how honored I am to be here and hear these accolades. I'm sure that through the years, there were things that I advised on or made decisions on that came into question, but I can say that I always did my best to serve the boards that I served and the citizens of New Hanover County. And I always said to citizens when they would come in, and thank me for helping them. I would say that that's my job and you pay my salary and I'm honored to be here to help you. Even if it wasn't the answer that they wanted, I always attempted to listen and to advise to the best of my ability. It truly has been my honor to serve you. And I always say that whatever the sitting board is, is my favorite board. So y'all are my favorite board. <laughs> 
and I thank you so, so very much. And it, it, today is very bittersweet, but I'm, I'm going to be leaving that chair, and Jordan is going to be sitting in it, and he will do an excellent job, and I'm sure he'll have new ideas, new ways of doing things, and I, I will always be available if you need me. I am always here to serve you, and I thank you very much. I just, want, I just want to say that my husband has been the absolute best. My husband and daughter, there were so many times when we were on vacation that I worked. So many times he had to pull over the car so that I could get mobile service. So many times that we have, uh, that he has absolutely known that I needed to do work for New Hanover County. And he has just always been, to coin that phrase, the wind beneath my wings. Yeah, absolutely. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Commissioner Barfield? Our clerk emailed me some minutes from a county commission meeting January 21st, 1992. These minutes are January 21st, 1992, that our clerk emailed me. And there's a motion in here. Motion, Commissioner Retchen stated, it is his distinct honor and pleasure to appoint Assistant County Attorney Wanda Copley to succeed Robert W. Pope as the County Attorney, effective April 1st, 1992. The motion was seconded by Commissioner Barfield. The cool thing is that I've my father had a chance to work with Wanda as assistant county attorney, and then he seconded the motion for her to become the county attorney. And now his son has the opportunity to work with her as well for the past 15 years. I call Wanda to Wanda. If you've ever seen the movie Fried Green Tomatoes, and you saw where she came in and took that sledgehammer and chopped down the wall, Wanda's been a person that has been breaking down walls for a long time as she served this great community. She's been a trailblazer, and she's been a great friend. And I've really been honored to work with you, to serve with you, uh, and looking forward to you having this great next season of your life, you and Brother Ron enjoying all that life has to offer. Thank you for being my friend, Wanda. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Uh, let me thank you. Uh, I agree completely with, with uh, Commissioner Barfield on this and a lot of things, but. Uh, Wanda, I, I really don't know what I'm going to do without you. 
you have saved me from myself more times than I can remember. Uh, for those of you in the audience and who are looking at this, uh, uh, there's a lot that goes on behind the curtain or behind the scenes. Uh, I've spent more hours with Wanda as she's talked me down from one position or another, and quite often she says she's not giving me the, the answer that I want to hear. And I try every way, and those of you who know me well know I can talk, a and I can come at it and be persistent. But she always gave me the right advice, every time. I really don't know what I'm going to do without you, although I know that Jordan will I just simply have big shoes to fill. And you know, along with smashing through walls, I'd say you've been smashing through ceilings and paving a way for women throughout New Hanover County and our great state of North Carolina. I will really miss you. Thank you. I would be at my house and my head about to explode from all the information that we get. And I tell my wife, I said, I'll be back a little bit. She said, where are you going? She wanted to. <laughs> and I will miss that. Wanda, I'm so pleased that you and I had a brief amount of time to work together. Of course, we've been friends for some time, and I'm grateful that our friendship is going to continue beyond our working relationship. I certainly will be looking to you for continued guidance. I'm sure that you recognize that you're not going to be able to get away just so easily as <laughs> retiring. Uh, you have been an inspiration to me and to <clears throat> the lawyers of this community. You have held yourself to the highest standards possible throughout your career. You have achieved great heights in your career. You have advised the county during some of the most difficult times. This is precisely what a lawyer of the highest standards and repute should do, and you have done. I commend you for your work on behalf of the people of this county, the county itself. I am grateful again for your friendship in the past, and I am extremely grateful for your, for your, for your continued friendship into the future. Congratulations on your retirement. Wanda, you know, um, when I first came on, uh, we quickly became friends, and um, Wanda said, you call me any time, day or night. Any question you have, I'm there to answer. And, you know, and that's what I needed as a new commissioner. And I, I think it's important for people to recognize you trailblazed in a time when women were not doing those things. The first is, is, is so admirable, and, and thank you for setting the example for other young lawyers and other young ladies to know that they can do the same things that you've done and accomplish what you've done. So thank you for being an example for others to follow and, and for me to look up to as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Good job, Wanda. Thank you. Hey, uh, does anybody want to approve the consent agenda? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make a motion we approve the consent agenda as presented, but I would like to bring special attention to number three, the adoption of Purple Heart Day proclamation. Although it's on our consent agenda, I want to definitely honor and recognize those men and women who have earned their Purple Heart in service to our country. To earn a Purple Heart, you must have been injured or wounded in battle. So again, we'll have a Purple Heart celebration program in the month of August. But for those that serve in county government, those who live in our community, we have a great military-friendly community here. We honor and thank those who are Purple Heart recipients. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now presentation of service awards and introduction of new employees. Commissioners, good morning. This, this is always a special day when we come together on the third Monday of a month to recognize outstanding contributions from some of the finest employees you're gonna find in the public sector anywhere. But, but I wanna take just a moment and, and reflect back on Wanda Copley, 39, years of service the first female attorney in the state of north carolina the longest serving county attorney and, and a friend to not only every commissioner who's ever served but every member of staff over that course of time it's one thing to be an attorney it's another thing to be an attorney and a good friend who will do everything they can to keep you commissioners apple from doing the wrong thing, no matter how convicted you may be to the idea. So Wanda, thank you for your friendship and the time that I've been here. Nobody can replace you. 
We say that every time we recognize someone who is retiring from New Hanover County, but, but it is extra true in this instance. You can never replace someone of the caliber of Wanda or Jim Iannucci or, or James Fleming, those that are coming before us. All we do is work really hard to find someone who's equally capable and passionate about the public service. Wanda, th thank you for everything. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to recognize a second retiree this morning, John Fleming. John, if you would come forward. Good morning, sir. If you don't mind standing next to me and reading a bit about your time in service. Deputy Don John Fleming is retiring after 13 years of service with New Hanover County. Deputy Fleming began his career with New Hanover County in the detention division, something that Wanda helped build a new county jail of the sheriff's office, working in a housing unit and then within the intake division. He transferred to the judicial division to serve first as a bailiff and ultimately he spent the remainder of his career with juvenile justice providing security services. Deputy Fleming has been known by his peers and those for whom he serves as a responsible individual, showing dedication to his job and the people of this county. He served professionally and with integrity during his time with the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office. One occasion that represents his service was at the Department of Health and Human Services when he found a person with a weapon attempting to enter into the facility. Deputy Fleming's observation skills and his discernment during that stressful situation helped to keep our citizens and our employees safe. That's all of our jobs, number one, to keep us safe. He received recognition and praise from his supervising staff for his outstanding job performance in what was clearly a dangerous situation. If you would, please join me in, congrat in congratulating Deputy John Fleming with 13 years of service to the citizens of New Hanover County. Sir, congratulations and thank you for everything that you've done. Deputy, again, congratulations and thank you for everything. Next, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Jim Iannucci, who is retiring as the county engineer, to come forward. And Jim, please bring your, your wife with you. If you'll do the honor of standing next to me, congratulations. Thank you. I'm going to read a bit about Jim Iannucci, who is retiring from New Hanover County. Jim began his New Hanover County career in the engineering department as a project engineer. He progressed in his service to become a chief project engineer and in 2009 was promoted to the county engineer position overseeing the entire engineering department. While leading the department, he has been on duty during some of the largest growth in the county's history and some of the most impactful natural disasters to ever affect our community. And all along the way, he's ensured, ensured the safety and well-being of our infrastructure and working with a team that has served to meet the needs of our community's build out, as well as the very soil on which we live and build things. Jim was involved with many projects that directly impacted the development of our community. Most recently, Jim led the process to create our stormwater services program that is very unique to the state of North Carolina. He implemented coastal storm damage reduction projects 
and has overseen and managed multiple grants and projects, all of which helped to build our community safer and more secure. Jim is a true public servant who has served our county as an officer in the U.S. Navy before coming to New Hanover County. And he served our state through the North Carolina Department of Transportation. Jim made a positive impact on those who served with him and those with whom he worked throughout his career. It's been an honor to know Jim since the first day I came to work. Please join me in congratulating Jim Iannucci on 17 outstanding years of service to New Hanover County. Congratulations, Jim. Well deserved. <laughs> Jim, congratulations. And again, thank you. Mr. Chairman, 13 years, 17 years, 39 years of service. Those are the, the men and lady that we are recognizing today with retirement. So if you would please, Mr. Chairman, lead us in another round of applause for John Jim Wong. So, Mr. Chairman, it's also an honor to recognize employees that have achieved significant milestones in their service to New Hanover County, and I look forward to calling your name and asking you to come up. I'd like to be the first to shake your hand, thank you for what you do, and then invite you to visit with the board and also have your picture made. And so, with our first five-year service award this morning, we're going to recognize Barbie Baker, with the Cape Fear Museum. Barbie, congratulations, and thank you for it. Also with five years of service, Chris Boney in the tax department. Chris, congratulations and thank you for what you do. Commissioners, also with five years of service. Kelly Giles, Register of Deeds. Kelly, congratulations and thank you for what you do. Commissioners also recognized with five years of service this morning, Lisa Pope, Health and Human Services, the 
Department of Social Services. Congratulations. Chairman, we'll proceed to 10 years of service. And this morning, the first person we're going to recognize is Sean Dwyer, Health and Human Services, the Department of Social Services. Sean, congratulations. Commissioners, also with 10 years of service, we're going to recognize this morning Mia Hoffman, Health and Human Services, the Health Department. Mia, congratulations and thank you for what you do. Commissioners, also with 10 years of service this morning, we're going to recognize Eric Spencer, Health and Human Services, the Health Department. <laughs> Eric, congratulations and thank you. Commissioners with 10 years of service, Shelton Wade, Parks and Gardens. Shelton, congratulations. Thank you for what you did. Commissioners, also, we're going to recognize uh, Lionel Willis for 10 years of service, Health and Human Services, the Health Department. <laughs> Lionel, congratulations and thank you for what you did. Chairman, we're going to proceed to 15 years of service, and we've got two folks to recognize this morning. And the first, with 15 years of service, Joanne Davenport, the tax department. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you. Commissioners with 15 years of service, Suzanne DeMarco Library. Susan, thank you.
Commissioner, we've, we've got another service award to recognize this morning. This is a big one, and it's not a retirement. 35 years of outstanding service, John Bryant Facilities <laughs> Management. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> John, again, congratulations and thank you. We'll see you in five years. <laughs> <laughs> For service recognition. So those are uh, milestone awards. Commissioners, if you would please lead us in a round of applause. So commissioners, we're going to recognize new folks that have joined the team since last we were together. I apologize. I should have brought reading glasses for my reading glasses. The font's a little bit small for me. If I mess up, say, hey, you got it wrong. Correct me, okay? Let's start out with the first person we're going to recognize this morning. And if you would stand up, or we had somebody show uh, innovation last time. They just came on up and shook the commissioner's <laughs> hand. You do what's comfortable for you. So first, having joined the team since last we met, Ashley Elmore in the Sheriff's Office. Ashley, congratulations. Thank you for coming to work with us. Michelle Gardner, Health and Human Services, the Department of Social Services. Michelle, thank you for coming to work with us. Bailey Ocker, Health and Human Services in the Health Department. Bailey, good morning. Jordan Snow, Health and Human Services, the Department of Social Services. Good morning. Thank you. Yvonne Swimhart, the Tax Department. Yvonne, good morning. Thank you for coming to work with us. Tony Vernon, Health and Human Services, Social Services. Tony, good morning. Braden Waddell, Health and Human Services, also the Department of Social Services. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Nashika Bell, Health and Human Services, Department of Social Services. Good morning. Thank you for coming to work with us. Joseph Dixon, Facilities Management. Joseph, good morning. Thank you. Christine Enderlin, the Senior Resource Center. Christine, good morning. Thank you for coming to work with us. This is really getting hard. Uh, bear with me. Shaquan Harris. Health and Human Services, the Department of Social Services. Shaquan, good morning. Millicent Ott, Planning and Land Use. Millicent, good morning. And Patrika Parker, Health and Human Services, the Health Department. Patrika, good morning. Thank you for coming to work with us. So, commissioners, these are some of the folks that have joined. They've joined the finest organization in North Carolina, I would argue probably anywhere in the country because they're committed and passionate about public service. They belong here. They're gonna serve you well. And thank you again for coming to work with New Hanover County. And that concludes service awards and retirements. Thank you. Next is our present, I mean, I'm sorry, consideration of Juneteenth proclamation. Whereas Williston, no, no, I'm sorry, thank you. 
Mr. Chairman, I'm honored to read this proclamation. I know that our Chief Diversity and Equity Inclusion Officer, Ms. Linda Thompson, will be the one making comments and speaking here. New York County Board of Commissioners Juneteenth Proclamation. Whereas President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, declaring enslaved people of Confederate territory free, paving the way for the passing of the 13th Amendment, which formally abolished slavery in the United States of America. And whereas word about the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation was delayed some two and one half years to June 19, 1865, of reaching authorities in African Americans in the South and Southwestern United States. And whereas Emanci Emancipation Day ob observations are held on different days in different states in the South and Southwest and in other parts of the nation. And whereas June 19th has a special meeting to African Americans and is called Juneteenth in combining the words June and 19th and has been celebrated by African American community for over 150 years. Now, therefore, it be proclaimed by the New York County Board of Commissioners that June 19th, 2023, will be recognized as Juneteenth in New York County and urge all citizens to become more aware of the significance of the celebration in African American history and in the heritage of our nation and county. Adopted this 19th day of June 2023, William Rothbard, Chair, Mr. Chair, I move approval of the proclamation as read. All second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Chair, entire commission for joining um, commissions and boards across this nation today to acknowledge this historic day. Um, we realize that that day had to have been an emotional day for so many, for the freedom that they had looked forward to finally came. It wasn't free, but it finally came. And so I am so proud that you have adopted this proclamation. Our chair for the New Hanover County African American History and Heritage Commission, Javon A. Skiba, was supposed to be here this morning, but she is under the weather. So on behalf of that county commission, we want to thank you for adopting this proclamation. Thank you. Next is recognition of the Williston Senior High classes of 60, 1969 and 1970, 2023 honorary graduation ceremony. Whereas Williston Senior High School, known to many of its alumni as the greatest school under the sun, was an all-black school and a source of excellent educational opportunities and community pride for African Americans. And whereas Williston's first high school class graduated in 1923, and for 45 years, it graduated, its graduates served the community and nation in a wide variety of roles. And whereas on June the 26th, 1968, despite over a decade of resistance to desegregation efforts, New Hanover County Board of Education made the decision to close Williston Senior High School and re relocate its African-American students to New Hanover and John T. Hoggard School, High Schools. And whereas the sophomore and junior classes of Williston Senior High School who were enrolled during the 67 to 1968 school year left their school thinking they would return, but were summarily denied the opportunity to graduate from a school that had stood at the center of civic life for New Hanover County's black community for decades. And whereas the New Hanover County Board of Commissioners acknowledges the issues of local government institutions to comply with the United States Supreme Court's 1954 decision, Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas, which called for school integration. And whereas the classes of 1969 and 1970 rose above the challenges created by the decisions to close the school by taking a decisive stance to move forward and rise above racism to make innumerable contributions in New Hanover County and beyond. Now, therefore, be it resolved that New Hanover County Board of Commissioners acknowledges the decision to close Williston Senior High School 
exacerbated tensions within the county and express, expresses a long overdue congratulations to the Williston senior, senior high classes of 69 and 70. The board does, the board hopes the July 1st, 2023 graduation ceremony helps to contribute to the ongoing healing for the graduates and the community. Adopted this 19th day of June, 2023. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we approve the resolution as presented. And I do have a couple of comments, Mr. Chair. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes, you know, sir. my father was a member of the class of 1964, and I've had the privilege over time to be around he and his classmates. And the amazing thing is that although I graduated in 1984 from Denver High School, I sometimes see my classmates. The Williston grads meet on a regular basis with their classes and they've maintained a tight bond and unity and commitment to maintaining a sense of community amongst themselves, something that I'm quite jealous of. You know, as I've heard and you hear the phrase often, that they're the greatest school under the sun. And the teachers there made it their business and were committed to making sure that these students graduated in excellence. They didn't have the opportunity not to excel, not to exceed, not to do well. Back in those days, you had many that are able to take trades as well. And as my father worked in construction, many of his classmates also helped him build homes in our community, as others did as well. And I'm truly proud to know the folks that have went to Williston. I went to Williston Junior High School, so I wasn't a part of the great legacy that you all have. You know, I'm thankful that Linda Thompson has taken this on to provide a sense of healing, a sense of closure, a sense of community, a sense of togetherness for those that graduate. And I can only imagine the sense of heartbreak that it must have been for you all to not be able to graduate with those that you had gone to elementary school, middle school, and high school with, only to be abruptly removed and taken to another school that you really weren't welcome at. I can only imagine what that must have been like. I can only, as one commissioner, say I'm sorry for the things that you all endured, but I'm so proud that we're here to honor your legacy and to bring a sense of healing here today. May God bless the class of 69 and 70 from Williston Senior High School. Thank you so much this morning. We're very honored to have members of the class of 1969 and 70 with us as you heard them or see them in their, their golden maroon. We also have two presidents. The class president for 1970, Mr. William Boykin is here. And giving just a few remarks will be the class president for the class of 69, Ulysses Slay. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Ulysses Slade, and I'm the last president of the last junior class of Williston, 1968. I'm here as representative of the last junior and sophomore classes to attend Williston Senior High School, 1968. My classmates are also in attendance in support of the commissioner's consideration to make a resolution that acknowledges the Williston Leg Legacy Graduation Ceremony for the classes of 1969 and 70. Now, I, I noticed as I walked in this morning, I, I saw a flag that flew over Williston Senior High School. We were taught about the three symbolic colors in the flag. The red symbolized hardiness and valor. <clears throat> the white symbolized purity and innocence. The blue symbolizes vigilance perseverance and justice. The closing of Williston was a direct contradict contradiction representative to those flag colors. There was no justice, no innocence, no valor in the closing of Williston Senior High School. The closing of Williston Senior High School was wrong in 1968, and if we review the details, the decision to close the school would be wrong and invalid today. In talking with graduates of Williston Senior High School, all of them stated that they wouldn't wish the feeling of not graduating from Williston on their worst enemy. They couldn't imagine what that would feel like. As you commissioners leave here today, I, I, want, you to, I want you to go home. I want you to walk to the entrance of your house. I want you to 
take out your key. I want you to place that key in the lock and turn it. But the key doesn't work. Someone from across the street shouts out that you don't live here anymore. <clears throat> it's closed. That was what happened to us at Williston. No warning, no consultation with the black community leaders or members. It's closed. It was final. We ask that in your consideration of a resolution, there are words of healing. We add that this commission offer words to recognize the insensitivity at the closing of the greatest school under the sun, Williston Senior High School. No one story tells the whole story. This commission has an opportunity to do what New Hanover County Schools failed to do in 1968, which was to honor the value and contributions of Williston Senior High School and its students and staff. So I say to you this morning, on behalf of the last junior and sophomore class of the Williston Senior High School 1968, I want to thank you for letting me address the board this morning. Let's take a photo with the class of 69 and 70. Next is pre presentation of proposed workforce housing service program year two for year 2024. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Chair, Vice Chair, and Commissioners. Today I'm here with our housing program manager, Theo McClammy, to present a draft workforce housing services program and criteria for the year two funding. Again, this is year two of five for your investment of not less than 15 million towards workforce and affordable housing. As with last year, to determine the community needs at this time, we are developing a request for proposals that will be finalized based off of the feedback we received today. This framework has been developed based off the Workforce Housing Advisory Committee's newly adopted strategic plan and recommendations from their annual housing report, as well as the updated housing needs assessment that was released to you last month in order to create an immediate impact to our residents. Just very briefly, one of the report's key findings is that there is an estimated overall housing gap of around 17,000 in the for sale units and a gap of around 12,000 rental units within the county over the next 10 years. One shift we saw with this updated study is the decrease in units needed for that higher income, but a very large increase in that workforce housing income range of 60 to 120% AMI. And this is the type of housing that has been prioritized in 
the uh, request for proposal. I'm going to turn it over to our program manager, Theo McClamey, to get into more of those details. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, continue our presentation this morning. Examples of eligible activities for the Workforce Housing Services Program are outlined in your packet. These activities are in line with the housing framework that has been pr presented over the past year with the goal of increasing and improving our community's affordable housing stock as well as increasing access to affordable housing. All activities must take place in New Hanover County with the appropriate zoning in place. Nonprofit, for-profit, and agencies would have the opportunity to submit proposals for funding. We have designed a point-based scoring criteria that I will show you in just a moment to ensure project viability and alignment with housing goals. We will evaluate the feasibility of proposals, including leveraging other funding sources, and ensure the applicant's capacity to deliver what they are proposing within a reasonable time frame. When looking at development quality, we ask, is the site suitable for development with materials and accommodations for the populations served? If it's a mixed income project, we ask, are the subsidized units comparable to market rate units? And finally, and finally, we ask, does the applicant have the capacity and experience to manage the project or program? With respect to programs, we ask, will this funding expand services being offered, or are they trying to replace existing funds? Since we have included a broad range of activities, and based on the applications we received last year, we are recommending once again placing a preference on projects that have the ability to create an immediate impact to our residents by adding new rental units. Eligible projects serve residents at 120% or under the area medium income. Priority is given to projects that serve, res to, that serve residents at 80% or under the AMI. Our updated housing needs assessment, which Rachel referenced earlier, indicated the biggest gap was for residents 80% AMI and under. This is the point-based scoring criteria that I mentioned earlier. If you decide to move forward with this framework, we have drafted points for the criteria. At this point, Rachel will continue with an overview of the application and funding process. So thank you. So moving forward with your feedback and recommendations today, staff will finalize the evaluation criteria and request for proposal. We will work with communications to develop a release so that everyone knows about this uh, proposal as well as an information session for interested parties to get their feedback. And at that time, we'll be able to finalize the RFP. After we receive the applications, a cross-functional team of county staff and a subcommittee of the Workforce Housing Advisory Committee will meet this summer to evaluate the proposals for eligibility and completeness, and then recommendations from this subcommittee would be presented to you this fall for final funding allocations. Uh, this concludes our presentation, and we are happy to hear your feedback or answer any questions. I will add, as in your packet, we are recommending a cap of $1.5 million per project again to ensure at least two projects but we have not uh, put any recommendations of a cap per cycle. So that is all. Mr. Chair. Oh. Go ahead. 
Uh, Rachel, uh, thanks. The, um, the timeline you laid out here, mm -hmm. you'll bring back the recommendations to the commissioners, so we'll have a chance to look at them before they're actually you know, money goes out. When do you anticipate the actual money, you know, checks going into people's hands? That will depend on the contracting process, but we worked with our finance department this past year in legal, and they have been working through the contract, so they had that money that they could move forward with some of their commitments uh, mm -hmm. pretty early on. But the actual check, it depends on when they, the project is funded. Some of the funding for uh, new construction may be at the closure of a loan. It may be at the period of um, when they have a construction loan, so it may be before or after that. So it really depends on the needs of the, the proposal. Mm. Yeah, I, I kind of understand what you're saying here. Uh, there's some flexible funding, but certainly the commitment is made that the uh, contractors can use to help leverage uh, you know, their loans or tax credits or whatever, correct? Yes, last year the recipients were two low-income housing tax credit projects mm -hmm. that had been awarded fundings in prior cycles. They both were left with a hole due to the um, supply chain issues, increasing construction costs. And so our funding was able to close that gap for them, for both mm. projects. I see. Uh, but it sounds like by the end of the year, uh, this year, you'll have the funding commitments out, uh, correct? Yes, we anticipate mm -hmm. that to be this fall, early fall, so that mm -hmm. shouldn't be an issue. And so early fall, what happens if we get uh, submissions that come in, you know, in the next six months? You know, we have another six months of the year. Is there any opportunity, or is all the money going out in the first part of the year, fiscal year? That would be what your decision would be if you would like to set a limit on how much goes out during this cycle. We mm -hmm. can certainly include that. As I mentioned, we have not made any recommendation on that so far. The only recommendation is a limit of $1.5 million per project. But if you would like to set a policy that puts you know, two cycles per year and mm -hmm. you would like us to have that opportunity in the spring, that is something that we can do as well. Hmm. Uh, one other thought, and then uh, I'll turn that over, the mic over to Commissioner Scalise. Uh, I noticed your scoring metric, you know, it only comes up to 85. Uh, was that by intention or, uh, or does it matter? 85 is a good number. It oh. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have to be 100. It, yeah. There's that flexibility with some of those priorities to push it up. So that's kind of why. I see. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Rachel, thank you all for your presentation, Mr. McClammy. Uh, you know, Mr. Kudray sent us an email over the weekend showing uh, at a hotel that's now renting out efficiencies. And there are one bedroom efficiencies with the refrigerator and stove in there, uh, starting in the $900 a month range. I'm thinking, wow, this is one room. You have no living room, no dining room, no den, no place to hide if you have children. You got one space in $900 to $1,100 a month. And recognizing the significant need that we have here for housing affordability, uh, I'm glad that we have, number one, set out the first cycle last year, but also looking forward down the road for the next four years as well. Commissioner Scalise and I were part of a <clears throat> NC housing, um, NC leadership forum conversation with New Hanover Brothers Pender in Columbus County so for about four months talking about housing affordability in those four counties and, and recognizing there's very vast needs and differentness in different counties. What I heard in Columbus County over and over again by the county management team was there was significant poverty there. And some of these communities don't have an abundance of apartments. Uh, so folks are living in sometimes substandard housing, older homes, as that's all that they have to work with. Uh, recognizing the limited amount of land that, that's still available in New Hampshire County to build on, I think it's important we find ways to encourage and, and leverage resources to help developers who have a keen sense of wanting to build more affordable housing. And as I was sharing with Commissioner Robin Bark yesterday, the word affordable housing kind of morphed into workforce housing to make it more palatable for some folks because when you say affordable housing, typically people think about public housing, which has nothing to do with affordable housing. As I often say, the definition is housing that does not exceed 30% of your gross income, which includes your utilities. 
and recognizing that many citizens in our community are housing cost burden. When you look at the average first time home buyer price point in our county right now, it's pretty close to $400,000 for the average home that's being sold right now and inventory is still relatively low and demand is great as well as interest rates rising which makes things even more unaffordable. Um, my goal would be to whenever you have a project let it let them come and make an application to us. There's no guarantee that you may have a project in a second cycle, but if you got something to shovel ready right now because the need is immediate. Uh, the need was two years ago, and the crazy thing is, many years ago we took a trip with the Chamber of Commerce down to Charleston, South Carolina, looking at what their affordable housing initiatives were, and they had a, a Boeing plant there employing over 8,500 folks. Volvo was coming in with the plant, and it was noted then that many people that driving 45, 50 miles away from Charleston because they couldn't afford to live in Charleston proper. Now this was a good eight years ago we took this trip, so we've been talking about this for a long time, but not making much headway until now. Mm -hmm. So again, I don't want to see folks having to drive from Bolivia and Shalot, which we have that happening, driving to Wilmington from Whiteville, which we have that happen. We have county employees driving that far because they can't afford to live here. I was talking to an Army recruiter this past week who lives in Fayetteville, and he works here. And he said, you know, the cost of housing is so much more here that it's more advantageous for me to drive from Fayetteville every day and, uh, and come to work as opposed to trying to buy a home here. And that says a lot. So thank you and your team, the planning department, for your great efforts. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Any discussion? Next is an appointment of voting delegate of the National Association of Counties 2023 annual conference. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, do you mind for the record accepting or adopting the framework that was presented? I think that gives the staff more certainty if there's a motion by the board. I'm happy to make that motion. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry about that. I'm also happy to make the motion to appoint County Manager Coudre as the voting delegate for the National Association of Counties 2023 Annual Conference. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I'll we serve you well. We presume you're willing to accept that appointment. <laughs> yes, sir. Right. Thank you. You can have all the fun. <laughs> it's hot in Austin mm -hmm. in July. Yes, it is. Okay, next is the uh, appointments. First one is uh, Early Gardens Foundation Board of Directors. Mr. Chairman, I would make motion to reappoint Eric Blazing and Charlie Rivenbork to that board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Five vote. Next is Cape Fear Community College Board of Trustees. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to reappoint William, re William Cherry. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Five vote. Mr. Chair, yes, um, on the Cape Fear Museum Advisory Board, which uh -huh. I believe is next, uh, I make a motion to reappoint Richard Andrews, Dana Crater, uh, and Eileen O'Malley, uh, and then include uh, Lucy Holman and Timothy Pinnock. Mr. Chairman, I would certainly second the motion to reappoint Richard Andrews, Dana Crater, and Eileen O'Malley, but I would like to break out the other applicants. So uh, if, if it's a substitute motion, my motion would be that we reappoint Richard Andrews, Dana Crater, and Eileen O'Malley. And we don't do substitute motions on committee. You just go with the order they're presented. So we got room for five, but you just went through. Go one by one. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I would prefer to advance two other names other than the um, folks that are eligible for reappointment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's that? So uh, again, Mr. Chairman, the normal process is that you go in the order presented. There's not really a motion to second when it comes to this. At least that has not been the pattern in the past. Uh, you take them as they come. So we got to vote on. Yeah, and I, and I gotta say just a comment. It's hard for me when we vote on folks as a group instead of individually. So I, I don't know what you normally have been doing, but I feel like we're <coughs> floating on a, a block versus each person individually. It, it works out to be the same. I know the last meeting, Commissioner Zappa wanted to bring stuff out, and it was still the same thing. 
because uh, whoever's nominated first, you got to go in the order of, of nominations, period. So it, it doesn't really matter. I, um, I'm happy to follow along with that. I am not going to provide a second to the motion provided by Commissioner Zappel. Okay, is there a second on this? Is there a second on? Mr. Chairman, um, if, if you haven't closed nominations, it, it, while there are five names in nomination, you can put more in, and I believe that that may be an option for Mr. Scalise. All right. And then um, you, you could vote on them in order or the three first names, but, but to, I have not heard motions closed, so there is the opportunity to put more names into nomination. Well, to reiterate, I would like to nominate the individuals who are eligible for reappointment, and I also want to nominate Ben Ivey and Kayla Barash. So do we Ms. go back Mr. to Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Okay. If we could address the reappointments and then address the other two seat vacancies in the order in which the nominations were received. Well, well, oh. Both commissioners were good with the three reappointments, so mm -hmm. we vote on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a motion to reappoint Richard Andrews, Dana <coughs> Brader, and Eileen O'Malley? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now. Um, Lucy you. Holman and Tim Pinnock. Motion, you made the motion, is there a second? I don't, I don't know them. Yeah, uh, Lucy Holman is the uh, Dean of the Randall Library over at UNCW uh, and um, brings a, a lot to the table, a lot of experience and uh, someone I've known for a number of years uh, and does a fabulous job as the Randall Library is, of course, is in the middle of a huge expansion tremendous uh, uh, responsibility and she's done you know wonderful work for them I think there's a lot of um, crossover uh, you know the, the work that she does uh, over at UNCW and could potentially do as a uh, on the Cape Fear Museum Advisory Board okay I I don't think we need a second on this. Uh, yeah, no, normally what happens yeah. is you, you, you go through the names, you look at the sheet that shows KFIR Museum Advisory Board, there's nomination, and there's a tally sheet, and you just put a check by. We all get three votes or five votes, and whatever comes with the first five is, or, is what it is. Uh, maybe our clerk can explain that so no, folks understand. No, what that is, says. Commissioner Barfield explained it perfectly. Thanks. So if we could get, um, Who's in favor of Ms. Holman? Uh, and Mr. Pinnock, I think. And Mr. Pinnock, yes, yeah. sir. So we all have two votes left, and I'll vote for Ms. Holman. I certainly vote for Ms. Holman uh, as well. As so we're going to do them individually now. Is that is that what we're doing? Okay, I'll, I'll vote for Ms. Holman. Just to let her, get her pass. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to Ben Ivey. You, you'll, sir, I'm sorry, you'll need to do 10. Pinnock. The order Pinnock nominated. Vote. He was in the order. Okay, I'm sorry. Tim Pinnock. Yep. Mm -hmm. right. I, I vote for him, for Tim Pinnock. Anyone else? Okay. Um, then Ben Ivey. I'll support Ben Ivey. Aye. 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 So that's four, one. So we have our five. Mm -hmm. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. okay. I did, yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, moving on to the CFPUA, would make uh, nominate Wesley Quarter for reappointment and William Smith for a new position on the CFPUA. Mr. Chair, uh, I agree with uh, Wes Quarter, but I'd like to nominate Sean Olds. OK. 
think <coughs> everybody who agrees with West Quarter. Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 Yeah. So that's 5 0. And what was the other one? William Smith is next. Mm -hmm. William Smith? Aye. 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 3 2. So do we need to go any further? Mm -hmm. Okay. And just so you know, if you don't say anything, you're voting in the affirmative. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, hear me say anything. That, I mean, it's not a no vote, it's just you're voting in the affirmative. Per our rules. Okay, New Hanover County ABC Board. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, I'll uh, nominate Louis Barney for that position. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chair, I need a um, chair for the ensuing year appointed for the. And there's oh, yeah, a letter yeah. in there for the, from the ABC right. board. The board I believe everybody got it. The, the uh, ABC board requested Bruce Shell be reappointed as chair. Yes, I need a, I need um, an approval. Yeah, I make motion that we approve that recommendation of Bruce Shell selected as the next chairman of the ABC board. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'd like to appoint Wanda. Copley to the airport authority. <laughs> I'll second it, even just in spirit. She'll <laughs> let me use her parking place every now and then. I'll, I'll wait for it. All Absolutely, yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Five O. Thank you very much. Today's been a, a day of honor for me, and I appreciate your faith in me. I've been representing the authority for 38 years, and I really wanted to continue serving with that board. There are a lot of great things coming mm -hmm. to the airport, and I appreciate your continued faith in me. Wanda, thank we're you. looking forward to continuing to work with you as well, so thank you for the service. Okay, New Hanover County Board of Examiners and Electricians. Only Charles Harrell. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Parks and Rec Advisory Board, Mr. Chairman, reappoint M. Ryan Bisblinghoff and appoint Kayla Brash. Okay. Very much the pleasure of the board. Second. Okay. Fine. John. Okay. Thank you. Um, New Hanover County Tourism Development Authority. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to see Nicholas Montoya come Nicholas back. Nicholas Montoya. <laughs> And anyone else? Just a point of clarification. It's my understanding that we have an additional vacancy, but we have not received a sufficient number of applicants to fill it. We have not received any. It's very tough to fill some of those vacancies on the categories, and Curry Beach has been a little, a bit of a struggle. Commissioner yes, Scalise, we, we are working on that. Yeah. Um, Curry Beach has a decline in um, hotel uh, operators and more towards the Airbnb, and it is legislated, so we are certainly looking for someone to fill that position actively, but we have not found that person yet. Okay. We just need an applicant. Yeah. Parks Conservancy of New Hanover County Board of Directors. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I nominate Rex Burford, Mark Arnett, and Sean Owens. Mm. Mr. Chairman, I nominate Chandler Case in addition to Rex Burford and Mac Mark Inat. And Mark's father, I believe, was our former HR director, Dennis Inat, before Mr. Frank Laney took over. Okay, let's go do them one at a time. Rex Buford. Aye. 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 Okay, that's good. Chandler Case. Mark Inat next. I'm sorry, Mark Hine. Aye. 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 Two. And and Sean Olds next. Sean Olds. Aye. No. Aye. What, what, what? Mm. Either what? Yes. 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 And, and I said no. No. And you're uh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the gentleman. I'll vote for Sean Olds. That's three. I believe that's it. Uh, 
Adrian Garber. Morning. Miss Garber, Miss Garber, just remember you got three three minutes, and that's it. Okay. I will, I will warn you when you get to 30 seconds. Thank you. My name is Adrienne Garber. I live on Silver Lake, located between River Road and Monkey Junction. This is a natural lake. I have owned my home for more than 20 years and have seen the lake rise and fall with the rains and droughts over the years. I am concerned that along with other existing factors, drastic changes to the elevations combined with large retaining walls within the last two months on River Road at the edge of our neighborhood may have caused a loss of runoff threatening the future of Silver Lake. I have provided some pictures that I took two days ago. The first one shows this area that I think may be affecting the lake. Um, I believe it's Sergio Apartments in Seven Bridge. Um, you can see it in the distance in that top picture. And then from the opposite direction, looking back at the lake on the bottom picture of the second page. Um, you can also see these retaining walls, the one of which I've zoomed in on at the corner of Lorraine and River Road, which is a large wall. It's one of many, I don't know, I've just noticed that this is what has changed in the last two months. I reached out to Robert Roger Shu of the Department of Environmental Services at UNCW. Mr. Shu provided images from 2002 during severe drought and April of this year, 2023, two months ago, pointing out that lake levels have been low and high multiple times over the past, past five years. Mr. Shu is very knowledgeable of Silver Lake and its history, and he provided many insights regarding the lake. This is a picture uh, of the drought conditions in 2002 when water levels in the area were lower than they are in 2023. The following page is a picture taken this year, two months ago, April, of Silver Lake. Um, Google Earth, I believe, is the source and it shows that healthy, healthy depth. At the same time he provided, at the same time of that picture, zoomed out showing this is before these retaining walls and the earth moving and the building started at that particular point. I'm concerned that the construction development in the last two months on River Road has directly affected the lake level despite the rains having been above average for these past two months the lake appears to be suddenly receiving, receding. Um, this picture is taken June 17th, two days ago, which is drastically different from the image from two months ago. Ms. Garber, you got 10 seconds. While we may be in a rain deficit looking back one year, we are not in a rain deficit looking back two months. I provide a list of questions as to what we can do to address this issue. I urge you not to take this hidden gem for granted. We should work towards saving it. I want Silver Lake to be here for another 100 years. The Thank benefits of taking action and keeping this vibrant and beautiful ecosystem far outweighs the risk of losing it. Thank you, Ms. Garber. I'm Thank sorry. You. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I did ride by and take a look at Silver Lake the other day and 
used to live close to that, that area at one point in time. And I will note uh, for the petitioner here that uh, the development of River Lights is actually in the city limits. Uh, the city did a voluntary annexation of that whole entire development. So I think your, your, your comments would be better addressed to the city of Wilmington with regards to retaining walls and all the construction that's taking place there as we have no jurisdiction at this point <coughs> over what's happening in that area. I did ride through Huntington Forest, which now connects with the Dell Webb community and is all interconnected back there now. And um, I, I see the significant change that's there and I guess saw the low level of the lake as well. But from the development standpoint, everything behind Mary C. Williams has really uh, been annexed by the city of Wilmington at this point and I'm hoping they could provide some better clarity and answers okay. for you. All right. Thank you. But certainly, thank you for making us aware of this issue. Thank you thank for you. your research. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, no, sure. a comment. Do, do we have anybody here from the stormwater utility? Yeah. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I guess you're, you're standing it for uh, Jim, I guess, is your, your yes, first sir. official appearance. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, the the purpose of the Silver Lake is it a, a retention or detention pond uh, that is just large, or or do you know? No, sir. It, it's as she stated. It's a natural lake. Um, that develop that area was developed prior to any uh, water quality standards from the state or um, stormwater uh, ordinances for the county. So, but does it act as a receiver of uh, runoff? You know, in that area. It, it does receive runoff. The, the roads um, actually drain into a pipe system that goes into that lake. Right. We've replaced uh, a couple of those lines actually last year. I see. Oh. Okay, yeah, fine. I just wanted to you know, see what the overall purpose of the lake was, but you said it's naturally forming. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Just want to say happy Father's Day again to all the fathers that are here and that are listening. We had a great day yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I also want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers and father figures and in particular recognize my father, David, who has uh, without question been one of the most influential people in my life. I got to spend the weekend with him and uh, it, is, it is never enough time. I love my dad. Mm -hmm. Ms. Copley. I think I've said a lot, <laughs> but I want to thank you all again. This is really surreal uh, that this is my last meeting sitting here. I have said that I'm going to watch you on TV, and uh, I, I will until it gets boring. Yeah. <laughs> you need to get out more, Juan. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But thank you all. Thank you all very, very much. I'm, today was a total surprise um, for the order of the Longleaf Pond. I'm very honored to have that, but I'm most honored having served with you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Just in case anybody didn't know, Wanda preceded Facebook. So anything, anything you want to know, you can go see Wanda. <laughs> Kim? All right. Anybody else? Meeting's over.